Welcome to this edition of Journals of Spiritual Discovery, brought to you by spiritualteachers.org. I'm your host, Sean Nevins. Welcome to Journals of Spiritual Discovery. I'm taking a break from interviewing spiritual teachers to focus on what I'm calling the induction series. The aim is to look at inspired writings, those which carry the living word. Franklin Merrill Wolf called these mystic writings, and he said that when the voice of the silence speaks into the relative world, the meaning lies between the words, as it were, rather than in the direct content of the words themselves. Similarly, Richard Rose said, if you're interested in looking for essence, from the point of the process observer, you can be stimulated only by writings of inspiration rather than reason or direction. And he referred his students to his The Three Books of the Absolute. Now, while Rose used the term inspirational, clearly these are not necessarily inspirational writings like you would typically find collected under that banner. Today's reading is from Bart Marshall's essay called Transmission, which appeared in the book Beyond Mind, Beyond Death. Now, Bart's been on this podcast, and he was featured in my film Closer Than Close, so I'm sure that many of you are familiar with his work. This is a brilliant essay, and it strikes a bell that's at the heart of true Zen. In Zen, the word transmission is used to denote the passing on of enlightenment through a master-student relationship. It is misleading in that it implies an energy transference in which enlightenment flows from someone who has it to someone who does not. Still, there's really no better word for what Zen points at with transmission. Enlightenment cannot be taught like mathematics or language or master with practice like art or music. The Zen master's task is more akin to helping someone born with no sense of humor suddenly break into an uncontrollable belly laugh, or to trigger in a self-absorbed egomaniac a spontaneous experience of unconditional love. One never makes progress towards this sort of thing. It could happen at any moment, or never. And so, when truth stands revealed, it is said transmission has occurred. Within that metaphor, however, it is perhaps more accurate to say that transmission is occurring always. God, Tao, the One, the Source, the Absolute, whatever we might call it, is in an unceasing state of transmission. Awakening is when reception occurs. Although this too is misleading, since there is no receiver. God's eternal state of transmission is a standing invitation to receive that may be accepted at any moment, but not by the ego identity. The ego mind, even one that has spent years seeking enlightenment, treats the invitation to receive transmission as a threat, as the hound of heaven. As long as ego is in control, or believes itself to be, the hound is successfully kept at bay. But, if ego is dethroned for even a moment, the hound is upon it. Its name is Grace. Invitation accepted. Transmission complete. Knowing the ego identity to be the sole guardian of the gate, the Zen master, with the permission and complicity of the aspirant, goes about the business of undermining and attacking its authority in subtle and sometimes not so subtle ways. This is the entire work of Zen. 
There is no teaching or practice, no zapping, no secret wisdom imparted with words, or rather, whatever there is of this is not the point. The Zen master is up to one thing only, the maneuvering of the seeker's ego mind into a sufficiently vulnerable position that it might falter just long enough for reception to occur. The master transmits nothing. He does not have enlightenment. No one ever has. So what could he transmit? He is a midwife, a facilitator, an awakening therapist. All rest with the aspirant. The source is as unavoidable as air, the very space you now take in. How close is the place you peer out from? How far from it could you stray? To see it, where do you look? To know it, where do you go? Thank you for listening. I do have one special request during the induction series. No, I'm not going to ask you to buy anything, but I am asking all my listeners to please leave a review on Amazon for my book, Subtraction, The Simple Math of Enlightenment. I know that a lot of you have read it, and if we can get a hundred reviews on Amazon, I'm told that will really help the book stand out and get noticed. So if you enjoyed Subtraction, please go to Amazon.com, type in Subtraction, the simple math of enlightenment and leave a review. It only takes a few minutes and you'll help many other seekers simply by giving your thoughts about the book. You don't have to have purchased the book on Amazon in order to leave a review there. So thanks. I hope you can do that for me and I will see you again on the next episode.